everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. I'll be hanging out with you today. We are about to wrap up our series on energy. We've got two videos left. First one today is about photosynthesis light reactions. The next video will be about photosynthesis dark reactions. Then that's it for this section. So let's go ahead and get on into it with our objectives, just like always. First thing I need you to be able to do by the end of this video is to relate the excitation of electrons to photosynthesis. Second thing, identify the locations of the light reactions in the, in the chloroplast. And the final thing, describe the light reactions of photosynthesis. Now, I forgot to make a slide about this, but before we even get into it, you need to recognize that photosynthesis is broken into two processes, the light reactions and the dark reactions. The light reactions are responsible for using sunlight and water to produce energy. That energy then goes on to drive the dark reactions. The dark reactions take in energy from the light reactions, carbohydrates, or not carbohydrates, carbon dioxide, and they produce carbohydrates. So if you need to stop, rewind that, write that down. Just know light reactions produce energy. That energy is used in the dark reactions to produce carbohydrates. Now, for the stuff I actually intended to talk about today. Before you can understand the process of photosynthesis, you need to understand a little bit about light and electrons. Now, I often get a question from students about why plants are green. Well, let's talk about the nature of color. Any color you see is a result of a certain wavelength of light being reflected from an object. So all light that we can see is organized according to wavelength and energy. On one end of the spectrum, you have light that is low energy with a long wavelength. On the other end of the spectrum, you have got high energy light with a very short wavelength. The only way we see color is when a specific wavelength of light is reflected from an object. So in the case of our plant, our plant is full of a pigment called chlorophyll. You've all heard that before, I am sure. So what chlorophyll does is chlorophyll absorbs blue light, purple, I don't know why I'm trying to write this down. You've got it down below. And it also absorbs red and orange light. Now, the thing to know about those two types of lights is they are on two different ends of the spectrum. Blue and purple is on one end. Red and orange is on the other end. So these two wavelengths of light, they actually get absorbed by the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll takes it in. It uses that energy to do what it needs to do. Green light is useless to our plants. So chlorophyll actually reflects any green light that hits it. So this is why we see plants as being green, because the purple, blue, and the red, orange light is absorbed. That's held onto by the plant, but the green light is reflected back and, of course, enters our eyes, and we see plants as a beautiful green color. So this all relates to the excitement of electrons, and a couple basic things about electrons. I'm going to show you a diagram over on the next slide. Our electrons, they exist in energy levels. If you remember from a basic science class, the structure of an atom is such that you've got a nucleus in the middle, and then there's like tracks outside of that nucleus. Each track holds a different number of electrons. Each track represents a different energy level for those electrons. When an electron gets hit by a photon of light, photon is just the basic energy packet that makes up light. When a photon hits an electron, it causes that electron to jump from a lower energy level up to a higher energy level, all right? And it'll hang out in that higher energy level. When it falls back to its original energy level, it gives up heat and a photon. So a photon kicks it up a level. When it falls back down, it gives back that photon and a little bit of heat. So here's a quick little diagram for you. I'm just gonna notate on it just a little bit. Got your nucleus right here in the middle. These two guys represent our energy levels that electrons exist in around our nucleus. You could think of them as being like the rows of seats in a stadium. When a photon of light comes in and it hits our electron, it causes our electron to get excited, which means he jumps up an energy level. He'll hang out in this energy level for a little while, and then when he's tired of that energy level, he falls back down, and when he falls back down, he gives off that photon of energy, and he gives off some heat. So this excitement of electron this idea is going to be really important to understanding the light reactions. As far as location is concerned, we've talked about chloroplasts before and their structure. This all happens in the thylakoid membrane. So these little things right here that look like stacks of poker chips 
All of that is thylakoid membrane. Thylakoid membrane is just a huge folded up membrane inside of our chloroplast. Now, just like the electron transport chain happened across the inner membrane of the mitochondria, the light reactions happen across this membrane here. So we are shuttling different uh, molecules back and forth between the inside of this thylakoid membrane and the outside of that membrane. All right, here's a quick overview of what you need to know for the light reactions. Input, solar energy, and water. So these are the things that go in. The output is oxygen, ATP, and NADPH. NADPH is just like NADH, but it's got that P in it because it hangs out with plants and it's in plants. So solar energy and water in, oxygen, ATP, NADPH out. And like I said earlier, whole purpose of the light reactions is to produce energy that will go over to the dark reactions. Final component you need to know before we can actually talk about the light reactions. In the thylakoid membrane are these little machines called photosystems. There is photosystem two and photosystem one. Now, first confusing thing you need to know is as we talk about the process of photosynthesis, photosystem two actually, become, actually comes before photosynthesis one. They're just numbered according to the order in which they were discovered. Each of these photosystems also has a specific type of chlorophyll in it, all right? Photosystem two has got chlorophyll 680. It is called 680 because it absorbs light of the wavelength 680 nanometers. Photosystem one has got chlorophyll uh, P700 because it absorbs light at the wavelength of 700 nanometers. Yeah, so let's go ahead and actually get into what is happening here. Call it my pen because I got some drawing to do. Here's how the light reactions work. There are two steps to it, and some of this is going to seem familiar. So first thing we got going on, we are going to draw sunshine, green sunshine for the day. The sunshine is sending light towards our plants. That light is hitting the photosystem. When it hits the photosystem, all of these green dots represent chlorophyll molecules. Remember, we talked about the excitement of electrons. Photons of light hit these molecules. As these molecules are hit, their electrons get excited. Their excited electrons start bouncing around. And what they do is they start passing electrons from one chlorophyll molecule to the next. So you get this little electron party as all of these electrons are backing, bouncing back and forth from one of these chlorophyll models to the next. Now, these excited electrons that are bouncing around, they will eventually get to this chlorophyll P680 right here. What happens when they get to him is he kicks the electrons up to the primary acceptor. This just means that this thing is an acceptor of electrons. So our excited electrons, they bounce around until they get kicked up to the primary electron acceptor. Now, before we go into the rest of this, note that since this electron has been kicked up here, we have a hole to fill down here. One of our atoms, he is missing an electron. So if you noticed a change in my slide, my pen got stuck and started drawing all over the place, so I had to shut things off and clean it back up. But like I was saying, because these electrons are bouncing around, eventually one of them is going to get kicked up to that primary electron acceptor. When an electron gets kicked up to this guy right here, a hole is left in the system. That hole needs to be filled by other electrons. Here's where water comes into the light reactions. Our water right here gets split in half. When it gets split in half, it gives up electrons. Those electrons are used to fill the hole left by this electron getting kicked up to the primary electron acceptor. When water gets split, you get two things. You get hydrogen ions and you get oxygen gas. That oxygen gas is the oxygen that we breathe. These hydrogen ions are going to be used to do work in just a little bit. So we've hit our chlorophyll. They've passed electrons all over the place. One of them got kicked up to the primary electron acceptor. Now, once it gets to this acceptor, it is going to bounce down an electron transport chain. This is just like the electron transport chain in the body that makes ATP. You are sending electrons downhill. As they go downhill, they are pumping hydrogens up. And those hydrogens will eventually flow back down through an ATP synthase and produce ATP. Now, while all the craziness is going on over here, Sunlight of a different wavelength is striking photosystem number one. Same thing is happening. Electrons are being passed between all of the chlorophyll molecules. Eventually, one of those excited electrons will get picked up by P700. When that happens, that, except, that excited electron 
gets kicked up to the primary ex electron acceptor. This electron that gets kicked off, he is going to be used to produce NADPH, which just like NADH is a high energy molecule that carries that electron from one place to another place. Now, if you notice, we kicked an electron up, he got used over here, so we now have a hole in this system down here. He is minus an electron. This hole gets filled by this electron that's coming down the electron transport chain. So let me see if I can recap this in a way that is kind of succinct and cleaner. I'm going to take off all my little markings so that you can see the board. Just try to follow along. We start out in photosystem two. Sunlight hits those electrons. It causes or it hits the chlorophyll. It causes electrons to get excited. Those electrons bounce between chlorophylls until they get to P680. P680 kicks them up to primary electron acceptor. We now have got a hole in our system. So water gets split. When it's split, it gives up its electrons. They fill the hole in the system. The splitting of water gives us hydrogen ions for use later, and it gives us the oxygen that will be released into the air, and we breathe it. The electron that just got caught by the primary electron acceptor in photosystem two bounces down through our electron transport chain, drives the pumping of hydrogen, which drives ATP synthase, which produces ATP. While all this mess is going on in photosystem two, Photosystem 1 is also being hit by sun, electrons are being excited, P700 kicks an electron up to the primary electron acceptor, that electron falls down and is caught by NADP plus to form NADH, the hole in that system is filled by the electron falling down the transport chain, whew, I think I got it all, I think I said it twice, hopefully you caught all of that. So just a quick recap of everything. This whole light reaction nonsense runs on the ability of excited electrons to harness energy and to do work as they go from an excited state down to an unexcited state. There is photosystem two and photosystem one. Each one absorbs a different wavelength of light, but their whole purpose is to make the excited electrons that are being kicked off by sunlight useful. And all of this happens in the thylakoid membrane of our chloroplast. Input is sun and water, so that would be photosystem two is using that sun and water. Waste product is oxygen. You also get ATP, which is gonna go over to the dark reactions to give it energy, and you get NADPH that also goes over to the dark reactions to give the dark reactions energy. So I think that covers it. I hope you're able to understand all of that. It was a lot of information. Thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. I'll see you again. Have a good day.